Hey guys, today I will be changing my gaming channel to a technology channel. I have always been interested in this topic, technology. <clears throat> so I'm going to start my YouTube channel and I'm going to change the name to something. I haven't thought of it yet. So it's going to stay Awesome Gamer Guy for a little bit, but it's going to change in a little bit. I will be doing a review on the Compaq Evo N160. Is it obsolete in 2018? The Compaq Evo N160 was released in 1999, or 2000, I can't really remember. This machine came with Windows 98 2nd Edition, 256 megabytes of RAM, but mine's been upgraded to 512 megabytes, a 20GB IDE hard drive, and an Intel Celeron CPU clocked at 930 MHz. The latest operating system I could find that would run on this computer was the Windows 8 Consumer Preview, the build 8250. This laptop includes a floppy drive that can be swapped out with a DVD-ROM drive. It also includes two USB ports, a dial-up port for a modem, an Ethernet jack. It also includes S-Video, a parallel printer port, and VGA. It also includes two line in and out jacks for headphones or a mic. So as you can see, this is what the Compaq Evo looks like. It has some buttons on the top here that I have not gotten drivers for. For, for yet. Well, I have, but they just don't work for some reason. Along with, I've also gotten um, the trackpad drivers to work, so these buttons are down here, although I really have no idea what they're used for. I'm gonna do the boot up test to see how fast this thing boots into Windows 8. This thing has uh, Windows 8, um, what was I gonna say? It has Windows 8, uh, the consumer, uh, the consumer developer version. This, can... this has the consumer preview of Windows 8 because this, that's the last version that this computer can run. Uh, this normally is supposed to be able to run Windows 7. But I'm pushing this thing to the limits. I'm going to see how far this will run if someone pushes it real hard with uh, Windows 8. I doubt people are going to do that. And I have a feeling no one's using this as their main machine. But it's still an interesting experiment. So... So now, time for the boot up test. See how long this thing boots? I need to adjust the screen. So you can see it has a beta logo because it has a beta fish thing. screen um don't be fooled by this um this computer is horribly slow um even if i click it watch you click it and it'll try to animate a little bit and then it just falls flat i just usually hit space because that works a lot better because when you hit space it sends it up like that so you can see it takes me right to the password prompt as you can see and i'm going to enter my password quick <laughs> Now, as you can see, this is booted into the consumer preview, as you can see down here, uh, build 8250. And that is uh, what I'll probably be using for a while. They did add some new modern changes in this version that didn't exist in the last. Now, they removed the start button. Oop, they removed the start button down here, as you can see. That is now integrated with the charms, as you can see here. The charms, it kind of loads slowly, but it, it's definitely usable. Like, I could totally use this. Like, settings, there's all that stuff there. <clears throat> I'm gonna check to see my brightness is up all the way. Okay, it is. <clears throat> if you're gonna use this, there are gonna be some cons that you're gonna have to deal with, and there's extra hardware that you have to buy for this stuff. So, yeah. This laptop does not have any wireless networking, so you're either gonna have to use Ethernet or an external dongle like this. Even though this device is called the Internet Zone, it does not come with Wi Fi, which is a little odd. Now, if you do ever want to use this computer, you're going to have to know a little bit more about computers to get everything working. Such as, see the sound here? You have to install separate drivers um, in order for the sound to work. And you can find that on HP's website. And that's, I heard that they're eventually going to take that down, so I might include a zip file of all the drivers for this machine in the description. Now that we are um, connected to the internet, as you can see we've got our Wi-Fi down there now. Let's do some generic tests, such as just some animation tests. So you can see here, you put your mouse in the corner to open up your charms. You can see it's not always the smoothest experience. 
and uh, yeah, you can see the Wi-Fi. The battery's shot, just to let you know, that's why it shows a gray uh, outline around it. So I can't really do a battery test to see how long this thing lasts because my battery's shot, so I have absolutely no idea. So, um, if you get the drivers working, you'll see that you can't change well if it wants to load. So if you get your drivers working, if I get my focus thing to work there, you can see um, some things are just not going to work, such as, um, first of all, if you don't have an external Wi-Fi adapter, as you saw, I plugged that in, you're not going to have any internet unless you plug in through wired, even though it's called internet zone, they didn't put wireless on this, I'm not sure if it was a big thing back then. Um, you can see they have the, ah, you can see along with, uh, they have your, like they have the language that you have, you could change the power settings and notifications. Like I said, brightness is not available. It says Windows can't adjust the brightness on this display because you do that within the keys on the keyboard. You can see that it uses a hardware brightness and it doesn't really change very much and my camera's not really making it show. But yeah, if you get your sound working, that will be there. Otherwise it'll also say unavailable. Like you can see some, that's not very smooth, but PC settings, that's something. That's how you get into this. The version that I have here doesn't have an app for it, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it does. It's as you can see, but it doesn't really do much. Along with it says I have an activated Windows, although I did put a product key in. Don't know why it won't activate. There, checking this key. So, you can see that you have all the tabs here that you would in Windows 8. You also have your uh, desktop tabs as well. And just to let you know the start menu, this is actually running a lot better than it did before. I don't think I put my brightness back up. Oh, I did. It's just a dark display. Um, None of these apps work. If you want to use these apps, then none of them work. You can open them, like if I open the weather app here, you'll see that, um, come on, click. You'll see, come on, click. There, my mouse is a little messed up. But you can see it says app preview, and then it'll just eventually throw you right back in the start menu because it just doesn't work. The only apps that I've seen that actually work on here are all the desktop ones, all the desktop ones run okay. And the, um, see it just quit out. And camera. Camera is the only Metro app that works besides settings. Everything else here doesn't... Well, thanks for opening camera. I don't want you to open right now. I just hit start and it didn't crash. But, yeah, so there's that. I'll just pop myself right back in the desktop. Click. See how... I didn't have to click very much. I'm just kind of impatient right now. So as you can see here... Um, they, on this version of Windows 8, they did get all the modern icons. There's the Windows 8, uh, battery icon. Uh, I don't know if they got other ones, but you can see there's my Synaptics touchpad ones in here, too. Um, yeah, everything Windows 8 is pretty much here, so you should be good to go with that. Along with, since there's a start button, uh, to open your start menu, you can either open your charms bar, or you can just put your cursor down here where the start button was, and then that'll work. If you try to scroll around in here, it's not gonna be very smooth. In fact, it thinks I'm moving an app, which I'm not. As you can see, I just put my cursor down there, and now it's really confused. So, please just go back, or just swap place. there we go. Or just swap places, that's fine. So, um, yeah, you can see that there are all the Metro apps in here. Um, there's an all apps button somewhere, I don't know where that went. So, I'm gonna do some tests here to see um, if this computer would be good for anything. Now, as you can see here, the music plays perfectly fine on this computer. You can play music if you use media player, and you can see it's on music, and it will run just fine. <laughs> Moving Windows, though, does not work the best. You can see music plays just fine. I'm not gonna try video because it's way too slow. So this computer is not good for probably like any kind of video, so. Don't do it. <laughs> so here's an Explorer. Let's see if this works at an Explorer. The Metro version does not work, so don't even try. There we go. See if this works. Last that I tried, this just crashed. Yep. <laughs> see? Ooh. Yeah, I just crashed. So yeah, don't use our Explorer. It does not work, at least on Windows 8 Beta. Windows 7, it works fine, I think. But yeah, if you're going to use Windows 7 on this, it should be able to run it okay. Probably should have recorded this with 7 on it before I put 8. But yeah. Yeah, so that's probably it for this computer. My pop sound was not good. I'd say it's obsolete. <laughs> Today, I would say it's completely obsolete. Or not completely obsolete. I think if you um, were going to use this 
for, um, let's say you want to write documents for school or something, this totally would work for you. Or if you were just planning on using it as a retro gaming machine, it probably would work fine as well. But yeah, if you're going to use this for anything like mail or something like that, then you're going to want to have a spare computer if you're going to try to do anything with this one at all. Yeah, so that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. It doesn't really matter, but... Uh, and I'll see you all later. Bye, guys.